Okay, on the exhaust is pretty much the same story where I enlarged it and remember I'd already went in there and really opened it up but once you go in there and do you know the 6045 and get it set up there's our scribe line so there's over a hundred thousand or 125 I got a chop level and then roll it so let's go over it one time Like I said, this is after all the porting's done and the valve job's done. This is why you have to go back in here and do it. Look at this amount. Watch, watch this right here. Now that's a straight down pull. Now I'm going to start my curvature. Now that I got a, a depth cut straight up and down, I'm going to pull it in. Well, I'll tell you the rough thing about these big cutters, it spits and it just bounces off your head, your cheek, your face. I mean, you can wear a guard, but it fogs up, but you can feel it, man. It ain't like the little ones. It throws chunks out. Because you can't have no fillet in the way past there. In other words, it's got to roll off and go curvature. It can't come up and then go around. It's got to go straight back. I'm going to squat the camera down just a second and let you get a bird's eye view level so that you can see how much material has actually come off of it after the valve job's done when you pull this in and the reason why you do it. Look, I got the camera right next to it almost at 90 degrees. Look at how once you hit the 45, the little gray line, Look at how it just rolls off of it. Now when we switch over here and we go to this one, look at that fillet. I mean you can see the silver line. Remember where I scribed it? It's way up from there and then a bunch up there. So pretty much the gray lines of seed has got to do a hump and roll to get out. Instead of being able to pick off of the 45 and then the the 70 and then roll off of it it's got a big fillet radius and that's just not what you want so see going back and forth uh, you know it's kind of hard to pan this thing correctly look at that no fillet a bunch of fillet that's why we go back in there and do it right there after we do the valve job that almost I can't name a single shop over the years that, that I've ever seen that went in there and done this after the valve job was done. They're either chicken poop or they just don't want to do it because it resembles work. Alright, just wanted to give you that heads up shot there. There we go. The valve job, we just got through 
uh, sea seam, the combustion chamber, and a, and a hook port and a straight port. What I wanted to show you was the valve job. Notice how the gray, I've got them at uh, 50, 45 to 50 thousandths width on the intake and 50 to 55 on the exhaust. 10 thousandths from the edge getting maximum valve diameter on both of them. That's what you're looking for. I didn't put a top cut on them because uh, SI, when they gave me these valves, they're, they're so small of a face width on them. There really ain't much I could put on the top before I'd run off into the gray seat, but let's take a look at the head, look at the mate to it. One thing I do know, this head was milled a tremendous amount. I'd say probably anywhere 40 to 50 thousandths. When we CC'd the combustion chamber just now, we ended up with 109.2 and these heads are rated at 113. So we're probably going to run into an intake manifold alignment problem. So, but the good news is 272 cc's on the hook port, 271 cc's on the straight port. So I got the balance between the two within one cc of each other. And uh, that's a pretty good hit. That's about a 30 cc hit. So this has been a total redesign of the intake port on the cylinder head, which bears nothing in common with what it was to begin with. Okay, near the last step, before I rinse them off, I always take and I chase every single thread in the head because you never know, especially with older ones, if you're going to have one that has got some loose threads or don't have any threads or is damaged. So, especially just clearing them out, I mean, valve cover bolts, they have silicone on them. There's some in there right there. And nothing beats going in there and cleaning them because, whoa, as you see, ain't nothing worse than that. Somebody gets a head with $1,000 worth of valves of work and porting in it and all of a sudden they go to bolt it on the bolts. I mean that just shows that no attention to detail was done whatsoever and you people would really be surprised at how many shops will do that and not go in there and take care of the things like went in here and cleared the oil galleys out, opened all them up, opened the water jackets, rounded the head off. There's no casting flash nowhere around the head so you can take your hand touch it it's all smooth <laughs> all of it's leveled I mean and it takes a couple of hours to do this but this reflects you as a cylinder head guy the quality of your workmanship you're not just handing them something with a lot of port in it you're handing them a reflection of yourself to how well a detail for when they get a head like this, they ain't like bolted on them, threads are going to go, they're not going to cut their hands to pieces on the heads. The oil galleys are all done. This right here, of course, was heat baked, epoxy on the top, quick oil returns. It's just It's got all the tricks, not just in the ports, not just in the valve jobs, but everything all the way around in the head. All right, when you see it in a minute, it'll be washed. We'll be putting springs, retainers, locks on it, set. Uh, great job on the heads. We'll, we'll see how they perform. He's going to help me uh, put them on, and then uh, we'll get some video into Monte Carlo with these heads on it. Yeah, that's great. I look forward to it myself. I was kind of in a good mood about the runner consistency. We hit 271 and 272 from the hook to the other one. And our uh, spring pressures and everything pretty much come in right on the money. So we're going to film some of it on the car, put it on there, try to get it lined up, maybe get some ET passes on it if we're lucky enough and see what we got. I appreciate your patience. It took a while, but uh, good things come to those who wait. Look forward to it. All right. Thank you much, John. Uh -huh.